So a car moves horizontally rather than vertically like the lift, but we have a similar relationship between the velocities and the acceleration. In order to cut, slow a car down, we need to have a force which is opposing that motion. So luckily for us, this force exists everywhere on Earth and is known as friction. So you may remember from the last topic when we pushed the book along the floor. The book moved only a short distance before coming to rest. This was because the frictional force was opposing its motion and forcing it to come to a stop. Now have you ever noticed that if you push a really heavy object, you need to push it very hard to start it moving, but then once it started moving, you don't have to push it as hard to continue it moving. There's two types of friction. We have static friction and kinetic friction. Generally, static friction is larger than kinetic friction. So static friction is the force that you would need to apply to start an object moving, while kinetic friction is the force that you need to apply to keep an object moving at a constant velocity. So let's look at these in a bit more detail. So an object which is sitting on a surface has the, its weight force acting down and a normal reaction force acting upwards. The frictional force is actually proportional to this normal reaction force. So the frictional force for static friction can be written as the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction which is a dimensionless constant and depends on the two surfaces, times the normal force acting on the body. So the frictional force actually comes about because of the electrostatic attractions between the two objects. So you need a large force to overcome these and then a slightly smaller force to overcome them if they're already moving against each other. Let's have a look at a calculation now let's calculate how much force we need to apply to a car if it has a mass of 1,200 kilograms and a coefficient of static friction of 1.0. Then what force would you need to apply to start the car moving? Let's start this problem by drawing a diagram. So here's the surface, here's the car. We're told that the mass of the car is equal to 1,200 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction is equal to 1.0. So we'll apply a force in this direction and the car will experience a frictional force opposing this applied force here. And the size of the frictional force will be equal to mu s times the normal force. So we need to know how big this normal force is. The normal force is perfectly balanced by the weight force mg. So we've got that the magnitude of the normal force is equal to the magnitude of the weight force mg. That's because this is a nice horizontal surface. Later we'll be considering what happens if this surface is no longer horizontal. So it's interesting to note the normal force is perpendicular to the surface but the frictional force is not in the same direction as the normal force. The frictional force always opposes the direction of motion of the car. So not necessarily the direction of the applied force but the direction of motion. For static friction as it's not moving it does always oppose the applied force. Okay so we can substitute everything in here now. We know that this is mu s mg. Mu s is 1.0. The mass of the car is 1,200. And g is 9.8 meters per second per second. So substituting that in, we end up with 11,760 newtons. So we need to push it with this force just to start it moving. So now let's imagine that we've got the same car and it's now started moving. In this case, it's moving without its wheels turning, it's skidding over the surface. So if the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.80, calculate how much force you need to apply to keep the car moving. 
the frictional force is related to the coefficient of kinetic friction in the same way as the coefficient of static force. The frictional force is equal to mu k times the normal force. So let's do that calculation now. So let's just draw a quick diagram again. Here we go, here's our car. It's now moving forwards with some velocity. We're applying some force F and the car is experiencing a frictional force to oppose this motion, so in the opposite direction of this velocity down here. And the size of the frictional force is equal to mu k times n. The normal force, again, has the same magnitude as the weight force, as this is a horizontal surface, and all the vertical components are balanced because it's not accelerating vertically. And so we've got that this is equal to mu k m g, and so that is equal to 0 0.80 times the mass of the car, which was 1,200 times 9.8. And so solving this, we get 9,408 newtons. So we don't need to push it with as big a force to keep it going as we needed to push it with to start it moving.